Well, hello, folks. Top Gun here with you, and I got a good one for you. And Nikki Boo, thank you, man. This is amazing. Love this jacket. Come on, if I'm gonna be like gone forever, I had to come back like costumed up. You hero. So, anyways, yeah, sorry we've gone so long. Gotta actually pay the bills while I'm waiting for you know bear markets to end. But yeah, uh, this weekend I'm gonna have some videos coming for you. And tonight, what we're gonna look at is the markets. Not that. Oops, you do. Uh, all right. E okay, we know I like this. There we go. Help if I was actually prepared. <sighs> all right. So traditional markets. Looking at the SBX. What do we got going on here? Why do you guys care? This is a crypto show. Because, guys, these, these markets, whether you like it or not, are tied together. Okay? Like, how do you buy crypto? With fiat. <laughs> since you can exchange them for each other. And since you can exchange fiat for stocks. You know, this stuff is it's connected. It, it all exists in liquidity pools with each other in places. It's connected. All right? I don't make the rules. I'm just playing by them. So... As we can see, trading with the SPX has gone into a rebound or a rally somewhat. Right now, still trying to break the resistance line I have marked at the 166 territory. It's still bouncing around in here. Um, basically, the MACD is slowing down. We're in oversold or overbought conditions. This likely is the end of the rally that we're looking at. And why? Why is the rally so short lived? Because the technicals are so agitated. The market is begging for a rebound. But to go from 39 to 41, um, let me do the math for you. That's not even 10%. That's more like a 5% increase. That's, that's all the rebound that this has gotten. The trend is your friend to the end. So the outlining trend is the yellow lines I have marked. The downward bear market. Now, I do believe with a little extra oomph, if the conditions could be right, it could get to 4,200 or even test 4,300 at the top of this range before it starts coming back down. But can it really? The market's pretty agitated. And when we look at the NASDAQ, why? It's just slightly more volatile version of the SPX. There was some very direct correlation between it and Bitcoin. But since the market's agitated like this, so for the week, again, all of these rebounds that we're seeing in Tesla and Apple that mirror the SPX, uh, basically this technical rebound or market rally that's been really agitated and frustrated, it's Bitcoin's fault. We all blame Bitcoin, okay? All at once, with me now. Blame Bitcoin, blame Bitcoin. When the world's going wrong and you can't find money, blame Bitcoin. Coin, blame Bitcoin. When your health's depressed and your all coins are going down, blame Bitcoin. Blame Bitcoin. All right, that's enough singing for you. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If your ears are bleeding, I, I'm, I'm not a musician or a financial advisor. It's not my fault. Uh, you come here for entertainment. I'm not a doctor either. If they're bleeding, you know, I, I don't. I'm not going to put a disclaimer for everything I do. Singing shouldn't have to be one. Anyways, so what do we got going on here with Bitcoin? I don't have a whole lot of lines marked with Bitcoin. I've got this long-standing trend, which, funny enough, you want to see where that comes down to a point. Oh, see, right down in this range here. Wouldn't it be funny if uh, November of this year was around the bottom of Bitcoin, around 11K, which we're nowhere near yet. The trend is your friend until the end. Um, so the meantime, the small trending, I had this line of resistance that had finally been made apparent very quickly. Uh, but, you know, for all the over, it's leveraging and they can't let it go too low or it'll really nuke and drop all the way down to that $2,200 mark uh, because it's so leveraged up right now. But, uh, yeah, they won't... Uh, basically... It kept going, any buyers, any buyers, any buyers, any buyers. And if it got all the way to the end with no buyers, it was going to plumb it down. A buyer showed up. 
Dun da da da. This is at a new standing trend of resistance. So now we can take this old standing trend of resistance, which was important and may be important in the future, but we can always redraw it. Just get rid of that. This is our current standing line of resistance. Basically, any buyers, any buyers, any buyers. If we don't get any buyers, by, ooh, is that the middle of June? Is that just two weeks from now, roughly, as a deadline? We're probably looking at a plummet. So we'll probably get some buyers off to the moon, right? No, no, not off to the moon. We're in a bear market. So what kind of rally could we have? Well, let's, let's hope that the rally ignores the wicks and follows this. So if we break, it's so there. And that's basically the top of the candles across. We will change color on yet one, purple. Okay, so if we get past this orangey line of resistance right here, pop up, well, we've got an immediate run in there that's not so good and I don't think we'll even get to that one what do you mean well what I mean is unfortunately see these wicks they do matter <laughs> I know but bro I don't want them to matter yeah well they, they still do our wants are not necessarily valid here and we'll make this one um, blazing red no we want it to stand out even more let's try pink Eh. What? Green. Uh, that's not like anything in there. Great. So, yeah. If we break the orange one, yeah, unfortunately the green one's probably the next one we're going to hit. And keep going, A buyers, A buyers, A buyers. Like, this is the fight. The sideways action fight to the top side of the trend. And what happens at the top side of the trend? Because the trend is your friend until the end. <laughs> oh! So basically... This is not a great time. Like, uh, there's a room for a rally for a dead cat bounce, but there is not, uh, not the je ne sais quoi, not the, the special ingredients, not this wonderful mixture we need to see this action happen, I don't think. And Bitcoin is a risk on asset. We need the risk on people, just buy it, you know, it's crap. You go broke doing it, but Mr. Sailor, you're dumb. You do this shit anyway. Would you please just buy some, please? Yeah, all right, buy some more. Leverage up uh, everything you've got. Leverage your shoes. Uh, sell some some foot pictures on OnlyFans. Whatever you got to do, Mr. Sailor. Buy some more. At least make Bitcoin look tempting because Bitcoin's a risk on asset and the entire market is so paranoid with the Fed not knowing what it's doing. They're all going, well, we'd like to have a rally, but... Bitcoin's not doing anything. It's it's looking very scary. It doesn't seem like a risk on environment to try trading this rally. So yeah, Bitcoin, you're ruining it for everyone. You really, you are. You're ruining it for everyone. And so uh, the altcoin season and the correlation people already know that exists. Like here's the Ethereum chart. Ooh, but see how, see how Bitcoin and Ethereum, like that's almost identical until now until this last month like boom same humps same humps and then like any buyers any buyers but a huge drop the bitcoin didn't have and it's trading below with the roi right now ethereum's actually getting kicked a little bit harder than bitcoin like ouch kabibble right and then yeah bnb also not a far off story it had more of a technical rebound a little bit freer as uh, an altcoin than Ethereum and Bitcoin. It was actually a little nicer over the last few weeks. Um, and I definitely pay attention to that because, well, one of my favorite assets right now, internet money, is priced in BNB because it'll be the next most liquid thing on Pulse Chain other than Pulse. Basically, Pulse token or internet money token. Either or. Like, check out Testnet. Pulse X, yeah, it's on there and it's paired with everything. So, yeah, um, it's a nice, good, cheap deal. So I keep scooping that up. DCA, DCA, 50 bucks here and there, man. It's going to make me rich eventually. Um, and then, oh, oh, I don't even want to talk about it, but I'm going to have to. It's news. So Luna, 
Um, Luna did a thing. As you can see, USDT is blank on here. Luna and USDT went blank this week. As they finally went, he, he, yeah, no, not happening. Binance was like, we're not, we're not trading them. Goodbye, they're gone. And then suddenly they reappear and six dollars and thirty five cents. Are you kidding me? I sold all my Luna because of you. That's Luna Classic, L U N C. Yeah, yeah. So they renamed Luna to Luna Classic, and that stopped being traded. Uh, at least on Binance. You can still trade at some odd places. I checked. It's still about a dollar for 10,000 tokens. <laughs> you know. Uh, woo! <laughs> um, yeah, considering it was $100 a token. That's pretty hurt. But uh, anyway, so Luna 2.0, which is now called Luna, is launched. So they went and took the, the title. So it accidentally showed back up on my chart and I had a mini heart attack. That, right now, they're doing their plan where I don't think they're even actively trading it. Like, you might be able to buy it, but that's it. Like, kind of a one-way thing, except for there's some sale action on this chart. So I got to relook up the plan, what the heck they were doing. Because originally, when they were talking about it, they were thinking, I think, a six-month window where you wouldn't actually be able to exit your position. But uh, anyone who was holding Luna before the crash and didn't sell out in a panic and got burned really, really bad may have received part of that planned airdrop. I'm doing some research with one of the Luna customers uh, to find out some more details firsthand from the customer side experience, not just what they say they're doing on the paper, but what they're actually doing to their customers, how many coins they're reimbursed as a whole, how many they had in the first place. But the dropped coins did spike up to almost $19 and have been holding steady over $6 for a couple of days now. So I, uh, I'm i not eager to put my money in Scam Chain 2.0. Um, 1.0 did enough wrecking and I was there when it collapsed to make money. So I will always have an eye on this beast because if it collapses again, I will be there to pillage the dead bones and pick them clean for every last dollar and exit liquidity buck I can get from every dumb dumb that wants to run in and do the same thing I'm doing. So, yeah, um, it's back. I'm not gonna go near it with a 10 foot pole until it's dead and pushing up daisies. Then I will, I will loot the corpse, um, but not until then. I do not trust it. Uh, so it exists, uh, however, uh, yeah, US invalid symbol. Binance fails to recognize USDT anymore. They're not even going to trade it for six cents. They're just like, nope, nope, nope. So, yeah, that funny story. Ha, ha, ha. So, yes, Luna is uh, trying to make a comeback, which, depending on how it does, because Bitcoin's being such a stick in the mud, I hate to say it, but Luna might actually lead the market rally if it gets some oomph. Because X has been holding strong in its uh, fear stage here. I have basically my red limit order areas set for absolute maximum pain. I don't think it can even hit. Basically, I got rid of our old support line because we have changed angle again. And funny enough, a long-standing resistance line became the support line in our trend. So really... Uh, I should maybe make this the same turquoise color to make these trend lines stand out the same. Ding, 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 ding. There we go. So the trend is your friend into the end. This is the ending of the bear market, hopefully in hex. It will hopefully still go alternate to Bitcoin and the rest, like it has a history of, but it does have a short history. We'll see. Basically, with this standing line broken as uh, resistance, it's become support. And basically, I'm expecting a bounce right about in this area, folks. Probably over the weekend. I don't think it, I'm not sure it'll get this low, but as we change angles and these two lines of support meet, we're going to have a lot of support. So I'm expecting a technical rebound. If we go to look at the past just a little bit, it's not a strong, not a necessary indicator, but just recently in this bear market, we had a pump up, and then you can see in the RSI we peaked, and then started coming down while still in green impressions in the Instagram, and then started coming back up, and that did 
form our rally. And basically, again, we've peaked in the RSI. We're tempting green impressions on the Instagram. If we can flash green on the Instagram and the RSI goes back to overbought, as you can see, we, we held that trend for a couple weeks. That's all we have to do again, and we will start seeing us breaking into these resistance lines. Of course, until we get a little bit more buy action happen. Basically, again, Bitcoin, stop ruining it for the rest of us. Okay, Sailor, buy some. Just, just do something stupid. You know other stupid people convince Kathy to buy some more. You just tell her it's a great time. Make the rest of us all very happy. We might actually take care of you when you go homeless. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, probably not. I said I'd never lie to you folks, so I, I'm, I'm going to include you, Michael. Uh, I don't know if I'd even put you up on my couch. I'm not sure I would trust you with my spare sheets. Probably hock them and buy some red coin. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's about it for my show tonight. It's just a little bit look at the market charts. Uh, what's going on in the markets with the rebound? Well, basically, um, yeah, the news has not actually been all that bad. The earning, or sorry, the uh, wage, salaries and wages um, report today was not bad news, but still, it went down. More bear or more hawkish behavior from the Fed and J.P. Morgan, even uh, the utmost gangster, you know, putting Al Capone to shame, Mr. Morgan, <laughs> or sorry, not uh, not J.P. Morgan and Chase, not Mr. Morgan. Uh, God, J. Diamond, Mr. Diamond. Yes. Man, that guy is crooked. Anyway. Um, no, seriously. Let's play a game. Is this a legitimate business or an organized crime ring? Google some headlines on JP Morgan. See what you find. <laughs> Go ahead. Put the put the best ones in the comments. Oh, and if you're still here, like and subscribe. But yeah, put the best uh headlines in the comments. The the best uh news headlines for JP Morgan and Chase. Go ahead. I dare to even try and find some good headlines about them. But, you know, I yeah, I mean they're a bank and and one of the headlines is one of their ships, like boats, was seized with twenty tons of cocaine. Over one point five billion dollars worth of cocaine. Or a legitimate business, organized crime ring. Play the game with me. Uh, you can put it in there. But anyways, um, yeah, the uh, the economy is not looking so great. But there, are basically, technical rebound should be happening. But uh, this week we've got the CP line coming up to try and make inflation look less bad. Um, the Fed is just not doing enough to tackle inflation. It's not getting investors' confidence, and Bitcoin floundering around isn't helping when there should be a technical rebound on the dum-dums. But even the dum-dums are scared because no one's buying Bitcoin. I'm glaring at you, Bitcoin buyers. You think it's so great. Buy some. Get you past this uh, line of resistance. Try it. I dare you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. I missed you guys, so I ranted at you a little bit. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, till next time, stay frosty.